Hey guys, welcome to the channel Scuba Travel and Adventure. Thomas here. Another video today about tires. It's my fourth set right now that I will be using Moto Z Tractionators GPS. It's uh, the best tire that I found so far. Uh, the current tires that I have on, uh, they worn out almost to nothing. I'll show you the video how far, how far down uh, they are worn out. So here's the marking uh, when the tire is removed and once I remove the tire the marking is actually sitting a bit deeper because the tire is uh, wider now it's not inflated so normally uh, when I was mounted on that mark was uh, almost almost touching the top part here so it looks a little bit different now because uh, this whole section is flat and uh, so yeah, you can see how much wear there is on that tire over time uh, of um, riding season. I would say probably easily you can do another 2000 or better uh, on this tire before I pulled it out. There is the new one installed, looking very good, ready for more adventures. I've got out of the last set that's currently on here, uh, 21 and a half thousand uh, kilometers um, you can do the conversion to miles uh, I live in Canada so it's gonna be in kilometers and metric uh, I find it that this is uh, one of the more the longest lasting tires and they are good pro for pretty much any terrain I made a couple videos in the past uh, about uh, changing tires on a Honda Africa twin or any other uh, motorcycle pretty much the same procedure but this time it's going to be a little bit different. A uh, few of you asked me uh, how do you break the bead and all that stuff. It is on the videos anyways, like on the previous one, so maybe you missed it. But I will show you how, uh, how I break the bead. And also, this time I will be making my life a little bit easier because I got myself Baja No Pinch Tool. It's a great tool uh, to install the new tires. Uh, this tool will not help you to remove the tires. You still have to remove the tires the conventional way with the tire irons or tire spoons, however you want to call them. But uh, that tool definitely will help you uh, to reinstall the tire without worrying about, uh, about pinching your tube. It's super easy, like uh, I did it already in the front, but I didn't film it. But this, this tool is a lifesaver and it packs really small because you can disassemble it and uh, add it to your toolkit on the road. I, will, uh, I normally don't carry it, but I do take it when I go on uh, longer adventures. I put it on the bottom of my uh, panniers and it's sitting there just in case because the, honestly, it's a... It saves you so much work and stress uh, spooning the tires on. If there is a tool, why not make the life much easier? It is very simple to use it. It's really not complicated. Uh, you'll see what I mean once we get to it. But before I get to it, I, let's roll this quick intro. First thing, you want to use your 27 millimeter socket and 22 to hold the screw on that side and loosen up the axle bolts. One thing you want to remember, uh, how many notches uh, here you have, you adjust the chain slack later. Uh, to approximate point and then you do the tweaking afterwards. So uh, 12 millimeter to loosen up the, the bolts right here for the uh, slack adjustment. Okay, now you can completely unscrew axle bolt on the right hand side and remove it. Put it on a clean surface, so this way it doesn't get too much mess in there. I will clean it anyways, and I use a rubber mallet to take the axle out of there. And just be careful because there's uh, wheel spacers. 
take the chain, put it off the side, and now I should be able to roll the wheel out of the place. There's the other spacer, and I don't want to put the wheel on a disc, so I will take my sprocket and a cush drive out of there, because it's gonna fall out anyway, so might as well take it all out. So we'll put it here for now, and first thing I wanna do, I want to clean my wheel anyway, so. I like to use, or six by sixes, whatever you have handy. Uh, this way I'm not laying my wheel on top of uh, concrete or such a thing. Different story when you are on the road, so there's not much of a choice. And uh, first thing we wanna do is remove the cap and use the valve stem remover to, re to drain the air out of the tire. Anytime you have your wheel out, a good idea to check your bearings. I just changed mine last year, but uh, I will have a quick look on it anyways, uh, just to make sure they're still in a good condition. Cause uh, yeah, I had a big mishap uh, if you follow my videos. So since you guys asked about how do I break the bead, if you are on a trail, uh, you can use your side stand. Uh, to break the bead. Of course, not of your bike. Uh, you, you would have to uh, be with your buddy. If you're alone, then it's good to have the uh, bead break, some sort of a bead breaker with you. Um, um, I do have the uh, Motion Pro bead breakers. So we'll start with breaking the bead. That's a step number one. Just so you know that Moto Z Tractionators, uh, they're one of the hardest sidewall tires. So it's uh, quite hard sometimes too. Okay, she did let go. So now it's gonna be much easier to just go around and break the bead all around the rim. Once it's loose uh, on the section, it goes much easier from there. There we go. So once you have that much, from here it's gonna go much easier. So you wanna make sure you break the bead on both sides. So this way the tire has enough slack when you're working with it later. All right. So once the other side got loose, this side is much easier. All right, so that's pretty much the hardest part of the tire change. Now you want to use a 12 millimeters to loosen up valve. Don't, don't take it out yet, the nut. Just leave it there, just loosen up a little bit. So I'm using those rim protectors. I didn't use it underneath because like, I don't care underneath. On the outside, I always use those. And from here, you have to work small bites. So you always wanna push with your knee on the opposite corner when you're trying to install it or remove the tire. Just apply as much pressure as you can just here on the bottom. So just put it against your disc in the back. Just be gentle not to scratch it. It's a good idea to have three spoons or tire irons. It's, uh, it makes it so much easier, but it's doable with two. I did it before, but then I bought another one to make yourself the life easier and just keep on, keep on pressing on the bottom. That's another type of uh, rim protectors, so I just wanna have more coverage because the other ones are still holding tight. All right, there she goes. All right, so we got the tire out. You want to clean everything inside. You wanna put a little bit of baby powder inside of your tire and smurge it around. 
but that prevents this tube to stick to the tire. All right, we're good. So now you want to, to figure which way you want to mount the tire, because uh, you can make that, uh, you can mount the tire for uh, completely being off-road, or you can do a 50-50. I always do a 50-50. I always spend more time on-road versus being off-road. So we'll put it a 50-50 mounting. So that's the way it goes. Another thing that I do, I lubricate the bead with the dish soap. So just a little bit of dish soap all around. Double check, triple check if you have to. And to mount it, the one side is very simple. Basically you just pound it on there. It's really nice if the tire is warm. So if you have a nice sunny day, leave the tire out uh, for uh, even an hour in the hot sun, that will heat up the tire for you. But since uh, here we have a uh, late October, I'm doing it in a garage, so it's gonna be a little bit cooler. It might not go the way I want it to go, as I did before, but we'll try it anyways. It still went in, no problem, as you see. <laughs> so that's a good sign. And now I wanna put the tube inside. I do have the heavy duty tube. My previous ones were Michelin. And let's see what this one is. I don't remember, I bought it a while ago. IRC. So this one is made by IRC. So once you have the one side of the tire on the rim uh, and the tube somewhat in place, put the nut on just a little bit, don't tie, don't tie it up. So that's your uh, valve stem locking nut and inflate the tube just a little bit. Not too much. And now you can work around to feed that onto inside the rim. Once you accomplish this, then the tire is gonna sit lower. And this is where the Baja no pinch comes, comes in. So basically how that works is just, uh, there's a couple different adapters that comes with it. Uh, I got the kit that uh, you can use on a different bikes, uh, but this adapter right here is for uh, axle for the Africa Twin. Then you have a thicker adapter, and then there's two other ones. So the, there's a few different choices. So yeah, we wanna sit that inside. Basically just push this a little bit at a time, all around. I want to push first where, I, where my knees are, so this way I can keep it pressed in and work around it. Just take small bites, same as uh, using the spoons, don't be too greedy. So as you see, that goes very nicely and you don't have to worry about pinching your tube this way either. And keep on pressing with the knee, that makes it a little bit easier to sit the tire inside here, inside the rim. I'm not even using the lube on this side. So this is like totally no effort, like a minimum effort to work the tire in. Almost there, just a couple more. There we go. So that's how easy it is when you're using Baja no pinch tool. At this point, all I want to do is uh, inflate the tire a little bit more. Okay, to pop the beat on that side. What about this side? This side a little bit more. There we go. So now we have the new tire. Where's my 12 mils? So now I can tie up that nut a little bit more here. Make sure the valve stem is screwed in. And might as well double check if I have the right rotation. 
so this is going 50 50 good so from this point you want to put all your rubber weights in place of course a good opportunity to clean the sprocket and make sure to have a quick peek on your bearings Okay, we're looking good. All right, so at this point, I'll do the static balancing. So basically, I just use uh, two jack stands and I put my level, make sure I'm plumb. So this is all nice and even. And also, you wanna make sure that the jack stands are even on the bottom. I just put my static balancing shaft inside. So there's a little Allen key that goes in here and tightens up everything so it holds everything nice, nicely. All right. We'll be looking for the heavy spot. So the wheel will stop on a heavy side. So there we are. So it's always opposite from the bottom. So it's gonna be right on top here. There are, they, they, those weights are 18 ounce each. So I do five and a three. That's more or less what I normally would be using. Let's see here. It's still going back, so it's not enough. We need a little bit more, not much more. So you should be able to stop the wheel pretty much in any position. There we are, that's it. So it is not falling anymore, so I know I have my sweet spot. So I will glue them in. I already cleaned the rim with alcohol, just so you know. But since I was touching it, I'll get one more swab. Check one more time. So as you see, the wheel is not falling in any uh, given direction. It just stays pretty much, doesn't matter how you turn it, it will stay in one spot. So that's how you see that the wheel is balanced uh, more or less properly because this is not 100%, but uh, that's pretty much uh, for a home uh, install, that's pretty much all you need. So at this point, I will wrap up this video uh, because I will be just putting the wheel back onto the bike and uh, from there it's pretty straightforward uh, anybody that has had the bike probably at some point or has removed the wheel if not um, i can link, link uh, my other video i'm not sure if that corner or that corner wherever is that gonna show up i will put a link to my previous videos that i did and uh, you can look it up uh, how the, the wheel goes back on a bike and how you can remove it so thank you for watching this video and if you find value in it, as always, don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And for now, peace out. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.